Hi, I'm Prentice Weathers, the product manager for Sidepower Stabilizers here at IMTRA. And um, we're going to see, <clears throat> uh, show you how to, how to remove a fin and install it. Um, we're using our boat show display, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit and use your imagination somewhat. But uh, what we're looking at is an SPS 55 actuator. It's a rack and pinion style actuator. Um, and here's our, uh, our vector fin. The rack and pinion actuator uh, actually is used for the two smallest size fins and then we have our more standard double cylinder yoke uh, type actuators for the larger fins. The only reason I bring that up is because the installation is uh, principle is the same but everything's kind of flipped upside down with the larger sizes. What I mean by that is um, the vector fin has the shaft uh, embedded in the fiberglass uh, in the foam, in the fiberglass, uh, foam filled fiberglass covered fin and uh, the shaft sticks up out of the fin. With the larger sizes the shaft is actually part of the actuator. It protrudes down and we're gonna, and the fin slides up onto the actuator so it's sort of reversed. But as I say the principle is the same. Uh, what we're going to do is is take a hydraulic installation tool, assemble it onto the onto the uh, the, uh, the actuator, and um, show you how to remove a fin. The first thing we do is is to remove the clamshell covers. There's, there's one on either side of the fin. It uh, protects the shaft a little bit and uh, provides a little bit better hydrodynamic flow. Um, I already removed the two screws that that. Uh, marry the two halves together because um, who wants to see me unscrewing a bunch of screws. So um, they're just two and the two pieces come together. I'll put it down here and I don't know if you can see it now but what I'm looking at is a is a hex head screw um, and I just happen to have a ratchet here. It's uh, I believe 13 millimeters. Just back it out. There's a, a specification in the manual that tells you what the torque is for installing this fin after the exercise. Um, and like anything else, <laughs> read the manual. This is, a, this is a refresher or a general guideline. It's really important to read the manual. There's some very specific torque specifications, sequences, um, and uh, a lot of things these days you don't need to read the manuals. You do with the vector fins. So I've removed this uh, fine thread uh, hex head bolt and they're not easy to find. Uh, this is a very fine metric thread. Don't lose it. Keep it clean. Um, so now I'm ex I have exposed um, this hole here and it's labeled ON uh, for ON. I think I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's the OFF port, OFF. 180 degrees opposite that is the on port. The fin's obviously already uh, installed. When we remove, so we're, gonna, we're going to put our hydraulic um, pump, which I'll just get here. Here's my back. There's a video showing you how to assemble this. But basically it's the SKF, that's the, the brand of the equipment, um, hydraulic pump. It's a 43,000 psi pump. Uh, very high pressure. Treat it with respect. There uh, are a lot of precautions. There are a lot of cautions um, about what to do and what not to do with this pump. But just bear in mind that 43,000 psi is about 10 times um, the pressure used in a thruster system. Uh, about 20 times the pressure used in a uh, in a windlass. Um, system so you know take care this is a, this is a, not a trivial uh, not a trivial piece of equipment I've got a couple of oil storm pads down here because the process of installing and removing fins uh, does get a little bit messy um, having installed the or assembled the, 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 the tool you can see this is the pretty pretty unwieldy uh, uh, pipe uh, there is a spherical surface on the end of it um, this nut, if you will, is going to thread into this adapter, which comes with the kit. 
The SKF tool has a lot of different adapters because these are used for many different applications. This particular one comes with the, with the kit you get from SidePower or uh, Impra. Having removed the port in the off, the off port, if you will, um, I'm going to thread this adapter in. It's a fine thread. Uh, it's metal on metal, stainless steel on st stainless steel. Be really careful threading this in. Don't cross thread it. So this goes in by hand. I'll now grab a, an adjustable and just uh, tighten that up. It's, in this particular case, it's pretty awkward. What I'm doing now is not very conventional. That's no way to install a, a hex head like that. I would use a, a socket. Firmly uh, get that installed. Take your, your pipe again. You've got a fine thread stainless steel uh, fitting. Put it in here. Firmly tighten it. So let's look at what, what we're going to do next. If you can see these, uh, these are about a dozen uh, nuts that are uh, threaded onto studs which are embedded in the, in the actuator. There, I've taken some of the studs out of this uh, boat show display, which is kind of cheating, um, but it makes it easier for me to explain all this and you can see things a little bit better. Um, you may, in some instances, need to actually remove this nut before you engage that uh, fitting, but that'll be obvious to you when, you when you go to do it in the first place. So what I want to do is, is remove all but two of the, uh, of the nuts. Uh, so I have um, at the ready some uh, 19 millimeter wrenches. Three quarter is very, very close to 19 mil, so, so that works as well. So the first thing I'm going to do really is just to, to back off um, um, all of my uh, nuts and, leave, and actually remove all of them except for, um, except for two. When you take the nut off, it's just a, just a, a hex head nut, um, you are going to expose – they may or may not fall off. They may s stick onto – onto the actuator, may fall onto the ground, so people go running away from you. The they is uh, these special lock washers. Um, there are two sides to the lock washers. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there's a, there's a fine side and a coarse side. And um, when, the, when you go to assemble these again, you're going to put them – oops, sorry, that's the coarse side, that's the fine side, coarse side, fine side. The coarse to coarse is what you want to look for. So uh, that's important to keep in mind. Um, you really shouldn't reuse lock washers. You should get new ones every time you install a fin. Um, but anyway, remember that you want to put the coarse side to the coarse side. So I'm going to put these up here. I'm going to go around now and remove all but two of the, two of the threads uh, of, the, of the nuts. So before we remove the fin, or before we install the fin, the, um, you sort of have to think down the road uh, where you want the fin and the actuator to be positioned. The ultimate objective is for the fin to be parallel to the keel um, when they're locked. And the system will automatically lock the fins when you turn the stabilizers off. If you lose hydraulic pressure, they'll automatically center. And when you go into reverse, they'll automatically center and lock. Um, by center, I mean the fins will assume an attitude parallel to the keel. The actuators um, provide uh, 78 degrees of motion. So, uh, sorry, 76 degrees of motion, 38 degrees um, from to starboard, 38 degrees to port. One of the beauties of this tapered shaft system is that I can or when I when I mount the actuator in the boat I can I can orient it in any position I want. There's no forward. There's no outboard inboard. Um, a smooth taper uh, tapered shaft um, means there's no key. There's no spline I have to worry about. So I can orient these any way I want. And that's very helpful for the builder, the installer, 
Um, but as a result, you have to sort of uh, calibrate everything <clears throat> before you go to put the fins on. So I'm just going to take the fin here and, and, and manually move it um, and sort of eyeball the center. The, the fin, at, at, uh, the actuator at, at equal stroke. So in theory, in most installations, when the actuator is centered uh, in mid-stroke, the, the fin will be parallel to the keel. Uh, when we're removing the fin, we want to make sure when we go to install it back on again, we put it in exactly the same position it came off of. So one way to do that is to, uh, when you turn the system off, assuming this is a refit or you're taking a fin off for repair or something like that, the system's been calibrated, the fins have been on, they've been registered. Um, when you turn the stabilizers off, the fins will assume their correct attitude. One thing you could do is just leave, just don't touch anything, just remove the fin. Before you do that, you'll want to go underneath the hull and, um, and put a chalk mark so that you can align the fin back up in that, into that same position. So before you remove the fin, know that your, uh, that your actuators are centered or the, whatever the locked position is and make a mark, a very obvious mark, take measurements as well if you like, from the chine out to the, out to the center of the fin or from the keel to the center of the fin make a chalk mark, do something to register um, where the fin is going to be installed again. I also like to um, put a mark this is, uh, you know, on, the, on the hull, right, uh, uh, put a piece of paint or piece of tape on one of the studs um, and then a little mark on the hull saying that stud is aligned with, the, with that witness mark so that you know that the actuator hasn't moved. Um, so having uh, registered that, um, make sure you know how you're going to install that fin again. I've already removed all the nuts. Um, I've already removed some of the studs too, as I said earlier, so I've kind of cheated a little bit. Um, removed all the nuts except two. In this instance, again, in this boat show display, we're actually not fully engaged uh, into, the, into the actuator. Um, by that I mean I can see from my practiced eye that, that this mounting ring um, would normally be closer to this plate. Uh, probably about half the distance uh, would actually be in reality. Um, so I'm looking at whatever, three-eighths of an inch. Um, it's probably going to be three-sixteenths of an inch showing typically. Um, so bear, just, just keep that in mind when you're watching this. So I've taken all the nuts off. Next step, uh, uh, I've assembled my, my hydraulic pump. Um, the next step is to take the remaining two nuts, back them off to all but about two threads. So what we're going to do is leave these nuts on here to capture the weight of the fin once we disengage the tapered shaft from the tapered uh, receptacle of the actuator. I'll go around back now and since this is not fully engaged there's a good possibility when I remove this when I loosen this last nut the whole thing will fall down anyway um, but let's use our imagination a little bit if that happens and pretend that this shaft uh, the fin is fully engaged. Nope didn't happen. Well, it happened a little bit. So I've backed off the fins uh, of the nuts so I've just got a couple of threads holding holding it on and I can see now that actually this, this fin has already come down. Uh, but imagine that, that that ring was still fully up. What you, the ring indicates to me that the whole fin has gone down. It's such a slight movement that you wouldn't have noticed it. But it is indicative of the fact that, that after all the pumping and tightening and all that, we're really only engaging the fin up into the actuator by, you know, a few millimeters once, once, it, once it makes contact. Um, so all the nuts are off. I've got just a couple of threads holding that on. I will, I don't know if you can see down here or not, but there's a, a valve on the pump itself. You want to turn that clockwise. Don't, it doesn't take much, just, just a light touch 
to close the valve so that it'll allow us to build up pressure. I'm now going to start pumping. And I'll pump and pump and pump. Um, you'll be pumping along, you'll be building up pressure because this hole is connected to a hole drilled vertically to the end of the actuator shaft. So it's pushing pressure up into that dead end cavity and it's expanding a little bit the, the, the cavity while driving the, the actuator shaft down. So the pump and pump and pump and all of a sudden you'll hear most of the time a very loud pop and even though you're ready for it, it's going to make you jump. Um, and that is simply you've reached that threshold where, where the fin is now dropped. Um, and the load is taken on to the two remaining nuts so that the whole thing just doesn't fall off onto the ground. Um, it may pop a couple of times, may need to do it another, again and again, but you'll know because <clears throat> there will be no more space um, uh, between the nut and the, and the, and the plate. So when you've reached that point, now um, the last thing to do is to remove the last couple of threads from the last two nuts. So you need somebody to support the fin. Um, in the larger sizes, you'll want a forklift under there. The whole key with this is to make sure that you're coming directly down perpendicular to the actuator. You don't want to you know, hold this up this way and cant it and scratch the surface and that sort of thing. So um, just understand that you want to bring that remaining... I don't know, four inches of, of berry of the shaft um, straight away perpendicular to the to the hull. Um, and, and it's it's awkward. The curved fins admittedly are a little bit awkward to hold. All the weight is here, all the leverage is there uh, at that end. So it's easy for me to say, yeah, okay, boys, let's go and hold it here. But now I'm I'm levering it. So um, the guy on the who's holding this end of it. Uh, has the hardest task. It's, it's a slippery um, uh, curve, maybe a little bit oily. Make sure he's ready before you go through the last step of dropping these, taking these two, uh, last two threads off. I'm not going to do it here because I don't have any help um, and the fit will fall off, but I think you get the principle. Um, so uh, when I'm ready to drop the fin off, I've got people supporting it. Um, the last thing I'll do is take off, uh, back off these threads, the last two threads on the remaining two nuts. The fin will drop down, uh, move it, protect it. Next thing we're going to do after that is to remove our, our, our pipe and adapter and then reinstall uh, the port plug that we removed as step one. Keep these threads clean when you put it back in. It's, I can't say it enough, uh, it's really important to keep these surfaces clean. Um, it's, it's a critical component because if you get dirt in between these two mating surfaces, which there's no space between them, you're actually, as we said, you're expanding it. You're driving something uh, bigger than the space it's designed to go in or it's going into. Um, it relies on the ability to build this very high hydraulic pressure. So if you score the surface, um, particularly a vertical score or get dirt into the system, um, you're going to regret it. So be careful and keep clean, keep it clean. Thanks.